Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the fundamentals of option pricing. As we saw in the previous module, options are financial contracts that give you the right but not the obligation to buy or sell an asset at a set price before a given expiration. Recall that calls options let you buy while put options let you sell the underlying asset at a set price. The price of the option, known as the premium, is the cost of this flexibility. Ultimately, options are used for hedging risks or speculating on price movements. Now that we've got the basics of why options are useful, let's explore what really determines an options premium. The pricing of an option depends on several key factors. Today, we'll focus on five major ones. The options type, the underlying asset price, the strike price, time to expiration, and volatility. We won't cover dividends or the risk-free rate since they're beyond the scope of our presentation. By the end of this video, you'll understand how these factors shape an option's fair price and interact with each other. Let's get started. Options come in two primary forms, calls and puts. Each serves a unique purpose in the market, but follow the same basic principle. You have the right, not the obligation to take action. For call options, if the market price goes up, the premium becomes more valuable because you can potentially buy the asset at a lower, predetermined cost and then benefits from selling it at the higher market price. For put options, if the market price goes down, the premium becomes more valuable as you can sell at a higher predetermined cost and avoid losses you'd face by selling at the lower market price. So in short, called premiums tend to increase in value when the underlying price rises, while the put premiums tend to increase in value when the underlying price decreases. The current market price of the underlying asset, also called the spot price, is one of the biggest factors in determining an option's value. Think of it this way. If you own a call option, you're hoping the asset price climbs above your strike price, making your options premium more valuable. Just like buying a house at a set price and watching its market value soar, a higher price makes your call worth more. On the other hand, if you own a put option, you want the price to drop below the strike, because that makes selling at a higher fixed price more profitable just like locking in a deal to sell your house before its market price crashes. This brings us to three key terms. In the money, where the option has intrinsic value. So for a call, the spot price is above the strike. For a put, the spot price is below the strike. Out of the money options, where the option has no intrinsic value. For a call, the spot price is below the strike. And for a put, the spot price is above the strike. When the contract is at the money, the spot price is equal to the strike price meaning there's no intrinsic value, but the option can hold extrinsic value. Essentially, the underlying price dictates whether an option is valuable at expiration or just a worthless contract. The strike price is like a target. It's the set price where you can buy or sell the underlying asset. The relationship between the strike and the market price determines whether an option is in the money or out the money at expiration. For call options, a lower strike price makes it easier to be in the money. Why? because you want the market price to rise above the strike. Just like locking in a deal on a stock before its price climbs. The lower the strike, the better the deal. For put options, a higher strike price increases the chance of being in the money. That's because you profit when the market price falls below the strike. Similar to having the right to sell something at a premium before its value drops. In both cases, the position of the strike compared to the current market price determines whether the option has intrinsic value or expires worthless. Time to expiration is exactly what it sounds like. How much time remains before an option contract expires. Think of it like a sand timer. The more sand left at the top, the more time for things to change. With options, more time means more opportunity for the market price to move in your favor making longer term options more expensive due to their higher time value. But as expiration approaches, that extra time value starts to melt away, a process known as theta decay. We'll be covering this in the next video. In short, more time means higher option premiums because there's a greater chance of underlying price movement. Less time means lower premiums as the window for underlying price movement closes. Volatility is one of the biggest drivers of option pricing. It determines how much an asset price is expected to fluctuate. Think of it like a weather forecast. If a storm is expected, people prepare for extreme conditions. 
just like traders adjust option prices when they anticipate big price swings. Higher vol increases the chance that a call or put will end up in the money, which raises the options premium. Lower vol means smaller expected price swings, making options cheaper since they are less likely to become profitable. For example, before an earnings announcement or major news, markets expect uncertainty, pushing option prices higher. As the event passes and the uncertainty fades away, the option premiums adjust accordingly. It's important to note that this is different from implied volatility, which reflects the market's expectation of future price swings. We'll explore that next. While realized volatility measures how much an asset has moved, implied volatility is forward-looking. It's the market's prediction of how much the asset might move in the future. Think of it like a concert ticket price before a big announcement. If rumors spread that a major artist might perform, demand surges and prices rise, regardless of whether the concert actually happens or not. Similarly, if traders expect big price swings, options premiums increase even if the movement hasn't happened yet. So, how is implied volatility calculated? Instead of looking at past price swings, implied volatility is derived from the option's current market price using a pricing model, such as the Black-Scholes model. Like its name mentions, it is implied from the options price. In other words, if options prices are high, the market is pricing in the potential for larger future moves. Higher implied vol means higher option prices as traders expect more uncertainty. Lower implied vol means cheaper option prices as expectation for bigger moves decrease. This is why option prices often spike before earnings announcement or major news. After the event passes, uncertainty is gone, implied vol decreases, and option prices drop. To wrap things up, option pricing is a dynamic puzzle, with each piece playing a crucial role in determining an option value. At its core, an option pricing model takes into account the option type, the underlying asset price, the strike price, time to expiration, and the implied volatility. In short, increase in the underlying asset price favors calls, while a decrease in the underlying price favor puts. More vol means higher option premiums. Lower vol translates to lower option premiums. Implied volatility is derived from market pricing and signals expected future price swings. By understanding these key factors, you'll be better equipped to understand the options market.